Hello, my name is Jessica. I'm an intern here at Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania National Military Park. And I'm standing here at the Spotsylvania Courthouse Battlefield at the intersection of the Brock Road and Grant Drive. If you visit us here at Spotsylvania, the fourth and final engagement in the park, one of the first landmarks you're likely to see is this monument. It stands on the spot where Major General John Sedgwick was killed on May 9th, 1864. Sedgwick was standing near here and admonishing his men for taking cover from a Confederate sharpshooter, same, saying they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. Very shortly after finishing that sentence, he was struck by a bullet right below his left eye and instantly killed. General Sedgwick might be most famous for his last words, but that day saw the end of a long and successful career in the army. And he participated in three of the four battles which are remembered at the park. Sedgwick's career began when he graduated from West Point in 1837, the same year as several other big names of the Civil War, such as Joseph Hooker and Jubal Early. He served in the Mexican-American War, as well as several conflicts with Native Americans, and began to rise through the ranks. After the Civil War broke out, Sedgwick's good performance earned him a promotion to the rank of Major General. At the Battle of Antietam, General Sedgwick was wounded three times, badly enough that he fell unconscious and had to be carried off the field. Upon his return to the service just a few months later, General Sedgwick was given command of the Sixth Corps, one of the seven large groups of soldiers that made up the Army of the Potomac. Sedgwick by then had gained a re reputation as a reliable officer. Nearly everybody liked him, and nobody liked him more than the men he commanded in the Sixth Corps. They affectionately referred to him as Uncle John. General Sedgwick never married or built a family, spending all of his time with the army instead. He was known to remain with his troops, even when camped near Washington, where some of his fellow officers preferred to spend their evenings in the city, away from thoughts of warfare. In doing so, he earned the loyalty and confidence of his soldiers. General Sedgwick was respected by those above him, too. When the Army of the Potomac was reorganized late in the war, it was suggested that Sedgwick be transferred to a different region. Army Commander George Meade insisted that Sedgwick remain with the Army of the Potomac, saying that he was, quote, more necessary to it than any other man. At the Battle of Chancellorsville in 1863, Sedgwick and his Sixth Corps were sent away from the main army to create a diversion at Fredericksburg. As the Union advance in Chancellorsville stalled out, General Hooker, then in command of the Army of the Potomac, called on his old classmate to attack the Confederate forces in front of him, hoping to pin the rebels in between the two parts of the Union army. Although the Chancellorsville campaign was ultimately unsuccessful, Sedgwick notably achieved a breakthrough on Marie's Heights. He and his men succeeded in the same kind of frontal charge that seemed so futile just a few months earlier at the Battle of Fredericksburg. Sedgwick and the Sixth Corps continued to push west until Confederate reinforcements halted them at Salem Church. Sedgwick would next return to this area a year later, almost to the day for the Battle of the Wilderness. As progress in that engagement came to a bitter stalemate, the armies marched south out of the burning woods until they clashed again here. Sedgwick's troops participated in an attack on Confederate forces occupying Laurel Hill on the evening of May 8, 1864, which in the gathering darkness devolved into a tangled hand-to-hand -hand struggle. Union forces fell back and began to dig entrenchments. It was the following morning when General Sedgwick went to the front to personally inspect his soldiers' lines. Bullets from sharpshooters' rifles occasionally passed overhead, but Sedgwick was unconcerned. When he made his fateful elephant comment, some of the men laughed with him. Somewhere across the way, a Confederate took aim at Sedgwick, and in an instant, the Sixth Corps lost its commander. Grief rippled through the Army of the Potomac. Generals Grant and Meade both expressed disbelief and regret at their colleagues' death, and the officers of the Sixth Corps openly wept. Sedgwick's home state of Connecticut declared a day of mourning. Today, we remember Sedgwick mostly for his one costly moment of bravado at Spotsylvania, but his life and career left much more behind. He wasn't the most brilliant strategist or the most aggressive fighter to lead troops in the Army of the Potomac, 
but he was reliable, brave, and well-respected by everyone who worked with him. He dedicated his life to the army and ultimately lost his life in its service.